Hi there and welcome to this new video. So in this video I want to talk about web application testing and I want to give some intuition over how you should approach the testing over a web application. Now recently I've released in Udemy a course on WAPT, on web application penetration testing. So I'm gonna put a link in the description if you're interested. Now I'm just these days, I'm just gonna create a bunch of material to explain why I chose to teach about pen testing in that specific way. And in general, I also want to give a little bit of free content for everyone regarding web application testing. So what do I want to talk about in this video? Now in this video, I want to focus on this application. It's called Secure Bank and it is the main topic of the course. In the course, what we do is we do a penetration testing over this application. Now what I want to talk about is when you have a full application, how should you approach the testing activity? What kind of things should you focus on and how? Because the thing is that if you are used, for example, to practice in labs, like you're doing CTFs, you're doing boot root machines, you're doing laboratories, what's the idea is that those laboratories typically have been developed with one, two, maybe three, four challenges in mind, and they follow a pretty linear path. So you go, you go from step one to step two, to step three, to step four, and then maybe you arrive at the end, step five, right? So they are pretty linear. Now, they are great to learn about the specific steps, the specific vulnerabilities, how to like, because each step you need to like, you need to develop some technical skill to go from one step to the other. So I'm not saying that CTFs are not good. They are extremely good. They are extremely useful and also boot to root machines. Now, the thing though is that when you actually go to work, when you are given like someone comes to you, a client comes to you and says, hey, look, I have this web application. Is this vulnerable? Now, when you have to perform a full penetration test, you, you don't focus on a linear path. You have a lot of choices. Like, for example, here we have this application. So what can we do? Well, we could, for example, read the page source maybe to start out to understand what is the HTML code of the application if it contains some sensitive information that was left out by the developers. So that could be one path to approach. Another path would be, okay, we go and we authenticate with a user. So the question becomes, do we have user credential for performing this test? Does the client, did the client give us credentials? What is the scope of the activity? And in the course, we also mention about the scope of the activity. And there is an initial email where the clients gives out the scope. And the scope basically is what do we need to test? What should we pay attention to? What is the functionalities that need to be tested? What are the domains, the URLs, the applications that need to be tested, right? And that is defined by the scope. The scope can also include user credentials because maybe the client gives us, you know, basic users and administrator users. Like for example, in this case, we can maybe the client does not give us any user. So there could be a, a kind of testing where the client just tells you, look, you just register a new user and you start from that. I, I don't give you any sort of in initial access. You have to figure out everything on your own. That is a form of testing. There could be another form of testing where the client is giving you different kinds of credentials for different kinds of users. Like you could have an administrator users, which Typically, the administrator has more privileges and so he can access more functionality over the application and then you have a basic user. So depending on the role, depending on the authorization scheme implemented by the application, you can have like the admin, then you can have like a user one, then you can have a user two, and maybe this user have different sets of privileges where the admin has the most privileges, then we find the user one, then the user two, and then maybe a normal user like like the client type of user, so stuff like that. Now, all of this has to be taken into consideration. For example, let's assume that we actually don't have any user credential, right? So we're gonna register a new user here. Here we put an email, we're gonna say test at uh, mail.com. I'm gonna put a password, I'm gonna say password. I'm gonna accept the terms and condition and I click register. And it says, we have sent a confidential link to your email address. Now here with burp, 
here I can load the a better configuration that is uh, more readable. Here in Burp, I can see a different request because, of course, when you test out, you always want to analyze the traffic. The traffic tells you a lot of information over the application. Here we see, look, we can register to the application. This is our credential. This is 200. Okay, perfect. And then I can log in. I can log in. And here to log in, I just use the test at mail.com and the password is password as you can see down here in the json body which is password uh, wait a second it failed so let's maybe i type it wrong maybe i type it wrong okay yes i did type it wrong it happens so basically here we are logged okay and here we find the main application now as you can see typical applications contain a lot of functionalities now secure bank was the, was designed to be a training application so like its complexity is limited it's not too trivial there are a bunch of functionalities and in the course we do find 40 different security issues and most of them have to do with uh, vulnerable functionalities so it goes to show that there are functionalities However, of course, this is not uh, comparable to a production application. Why? Because production applications typically are developed for many years. Like they are developed for so many use cases. Uh, the business evolves, it transforms over the years. Uh, and typically there are a lot of developers writing them. So they have a lot, a lot of complexity. And this also increases the amount of effort that you need to put when testing. However, in this small example, we can still learn something useful that you can then apply to more complex cases. For example, a very useful thing uh, that I also talk about in the course is this. We want, uh, we need to understand how the application is built up. That is, what are the single components of the application? Like if we just look at this screen, here we find a lot of different functionalities, a lot of different pieces of data. How do they come together to be displayed to the final user? And to do that, we can do a little trick. We activate intercept. And here I'm also going to change the proxy configuration in order to intercept the responses as well, because typically the responses are not uh, are not uh, matched. Here I'm going to intercept all requests and all responses like this. And this is the configuration that I want. So I'm going to activate intercept and I'm simply going to refresh the page. So I refresh the page and look at this. Here I have a first get request. This get request is for reading the basic page, the transaction page. I'm just going to forward it. I get the first response, and this first response contains the HTML code, the basic HTML code of the page, which if I render it in burp, this is the empty page, basically. So there is no data, it's just the page itself. And indeed, if I forward this to the browser, so look, this was the previous browser state with all the data. I'm going to forward this. And look, now the browser emptied out all the data. So this is the skeleton page, the skeleton HTML page that will then later be filled up with all the other data. And as we can see here, after we receive the re this response, after the initial HTML has been processed and executed by the application, by the browser, here we see three other requests pop up. And these are the requests for obtaining the profile user image, so the profile image for the user the available funds, so the amount of money for the given user, and the list of transactions. So as you can see here, there are three pieces of data that are requested from the browser to the server. So the browser requests this data from the server, and we can just analyze each, each one of them. So for example, let's forward the image. So we here we got the response for the image. Now this response is actually not an image because we have exploded it during the course. So we have changed the assets that is saved on the server, but that's a different story. So if you want to check how that worked, you can, uh, you can purchase the course, you can follow that. So basically here we have a response anyways, so we can just forward it. And notice indeed how when we forward this image, here the image is broken because we have changed the bytes. They do not represent anymore a correct PNG or JPEG or any image format. And therefore the browser cannot display the proper image. Then we find, uh, for example, the five icon. So the five icon forward it. Uh, and here the five icon, the response we say not modified. So for example, in this case, no problem whatsoever. Then we find the get available funds. This one, I'm going to forward it. Here I get the response of this get available funds, which is just contains the balance of 100 of my user. I forward it. And notice how now I get this information, 100. 
and here I get the list of transactions. So notice here a lot of parameters, I forward this, and here I get a JSON containing a single piece of data, like a list of data, but in this case I only have a single transaction, I forward it, and notice now in the table I obtain that list of transactions, which in this case is just one transaction. So one, piece, one key ability that you need to develop is this ability to break down the functioning of a complex item into its components, how it is con constituted, like into its constituents in a way. And then once you do that, once you understand the why the reason for each request, uh, so why is it made, what is the kind of data that it fetches from the server, then you can start to understand, okay, how could we test each request? How could we force it? Uh, what kind of test can we do? For example, let's consider this request. So this request is used to obtain uh, the available funds of the user. Now, as you can see here, we get uh, there is uh, this kind of cookie, this kind of uh, cookie for protection against uh, cross-site request forgery attacks. Now, in this case, one could, uh, one could, uh, one could um, reason like this. Uh, Cross-site request forgery attacks typically have to do when you have a write operation, not when you have a read-only operation. In this case, this API is read-only. Therefore, we can totally ignore this cookie. We don't need that. So we can totally ignore it. It's not that important for this particular endpoint. Why? Because it is read-only. And in the course, I show a practical exploitation over a CSRF attack to change the user password. So we go and, exp and explain and exploit that kind of vulnerability. But in this case, it's not really interesting. So what is interesting instead is that we see a session ID. So this seems to be an authenticated request. And we find a parameter here up on the top, user equal the username. So to test this out, we can send it to repeater. And the basic idea is that we can remove this cookie to make sure that it's not required. We send it again. We obtain the same response. This shows that that cookie is not really significant for this request. We can also remove a bunch of other headers that are really not that important, like the connection, the accept, like all this kind of stuff, which are more auxiliary. We obtain the same response, right? Now, at this point, we can ask ourselves, okay, how can we test the security of this endpoint? And here comes two different tests that we can do. And here comes the ability to understand the different tests that we can do and how to perform them. A first test, for example, is to test out if this endpoint is authenticated. And how do we do that? Well, simple, we just remove the cookie. By removing the cookie, we are testing out if the application will return an error or not. Now, why should it return an error? It should return an error because to access this information, I need to be authenticated as that particular user. However, if we send this request, notice that we still get the same answer. So lo look at the time, 14.02.34, 14.02.41. So I send the request, I obtain a new response, yet I still read the data. And this is an issue. This is an issue about authentication bypass. This is a very simple authentication bypass. Bypass. Why? Because we don't need to be authenticated to access this piece of data. And how do we test it out? By removing the cookie. So that's the first idea, authentication bypass. Now, another test instead is different. And the idea is that when I am authenticated with the session ID, the session ID, this session has been established with the test at gmail at mail.com with this particular email. And indeed, if we analyze the structure of this cookie, which we do in the course, we're going to see that in the first portion of the cookie, we see an email test at mail.com, right? And this is the user that we logged in initially, that we authenticated with initially. Now, at this point, we have already tested for authentication. So that's one thing. Another thing that we can do is test for authorization. Now, authorization is a different sort of deal than authentication, because in authentication, we are just testing if the application checks if we have a session and if we are authenticated with a specific user. In authorization, instead, the application has to check if our user, our currently authenticated user, that is our current identity, has access to that particular piece of data. Now, in this case, a possible test could be, what happens if here we put the email of another user? How would the application respond? Will it still give us the data or not? And how do we figure out the email of another user? Well, by analyzing the application here, for example, what do we see? Well, here we see the sender is secure bank, the receiver is tested email. However, if we create a new email here, Let's remove the intercept, by the way, because we don't need it. Now, if we create a new email here and we click on the receiver, let's, for example, write A. 
If you write hey, here we have a list of possible email addresses. Why? Because the application leaks out the currently registered usernames, and if you click on admin at exam.sh, here you see, oh look, this is the administrator uh, user, basically. So that's the idea. Then, when we're going to this request into the repeater, we can put the admin email here, this admin email here, and if we send the request, notice how I get a different balance. I don't get 100 anymore, I get 9,928. And this shows another vulnerability. In this case, we have a broken access control, we have an authorization issue, and this issue in particular, it is called an IDOR, an insecure direct object reference. And in the course, we see a bunch of different others in this application. Some of them are more trivial, some of them are less trivial, are more complex and more nuanced. So this is all to say the following thing. When you test out an application for real, you don't just have a linear path. You don't just have one, two, 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 three, two, four. That's not the way. There is no a single linear path. You can choose your path and this creates a lot of complexity and this requires a lot of structure, a lot of methodology when you approach a target. For example, a single API can contain many different vulnerabilities and you don't need, and you, let's say that you cannot stop at one. For example, we found the authentication bypass. Do we stop there? No, we also have to report the IDOR because maybe they will fix the authentication bypass, but they still need to fix the IDOR as well. It's important to tell these things to the client so that the client knows, look, here there are two things that are critical. First of all, the application should check authentication. Second of all, the application should make sure that the user we put in the parameter here is actually the same as the one we logged in, that we have a current session with, that we are authenticated with, basically. And to be honest, I would even argue, if I have to tell to a client, in this API, it doesn't make sense to have this parameter as an explicit parameter. Why? Because this information should be obtained from the current session. So a correct design, a better design, a more secure design would be the following one, where you don't have any parameter here, you just have an authentication cookie, you check the authentication, and then you implicitly assume that the user that you want to get the funds of is not the one given in the parameter, because that could be dangerous, but rather it is the one you're currently authenticated with, and you can extract that from the cookie. Not like the fact that, for example, this username is present in the cookie is actually not a correct thing, and there's another vulnerability which we discussed in the course, but to make it short, basically, the idea is that we need to think about design, we need to think about how to test, and uh, it's, it's different. It's different from just doing CTFs. So that was it. This is it for this video. In this video, I wanted to share some ideas, and also I wanted to share why I created that course exactly like that. That course is not just a series of labs. It is a real test over a vulnerable application, and this is why I think it has a lot of value, and I'm, I would be happy if you purchase it, if you go through it, and if you give me feedback positive or negative, so that in the following months I can improve it even more and I can add even more vulnerabilities. So basically that's the idea to create something that resembles real world penetration testing, real world activities, and there is a lot of value in that. That is why I created the course exactly like this. Now, if you're interested in more, you can check out the course link in the description. We use that link because it is a referral so that I get most of, um, of the purchase. Thank you very much and to the next video.